Hello everyone, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna go over face mesh detection. Basically giving more details about your face, the landmarks and the more important features about your face, like your lips, your eyes, your nose, ear placement of your ears. This is very much important in building applications, especially targeting AR or AR toolkit, augmented reality. So imagine a company who's into manufacturing of glasses and they wanna try, they wanna let people try their glasses online. So you could go, open your camera and pick up the frames that you like and put your frames, the new frames that you want to buy on your face and try it out onto the camera. Let's say someone is trying to get lipsticks and they know the placement of their lips, the exactly where the lips are and based on that, the AR application can put the color of that lipstick on your face so that you could try it out. And that helps in very much handy. But let's get started in the description of this video. There is a collab file that will open up like this. The first and foremost thing you want to do is install the media pipe library from Google. We'll do pip install media pipe. While we run this, we will download and start writing the other applications that we need. So the, these are some of the libraries that we need. So the first thing we want to do is import CV2, our open CV. And next thing is import our media pipe that we just downloaded and that is media pipe and then you have some google libraries that will help us upload some images on collab or display or even different applications from the collab file so we we'll say from google dot collab import files from google dot collab dot patches import cv2 underscore i am show so this files function will allow us to upload files from your computer and the CV2 IM show function will allow you to display the image that you're generating in your application onto Colab file. This is nothing but a Jupyter notebook. So you want to make sure it can display it on the notebook. The next thing is we are importing Mac and importing NumPy in case we need it as MP. So these are some of the libraries that we need. So just getting all the libraries ready for us and now we will go into the coding aspect the first thing is initializing the media pipe so we say mp face mesh is equal to mp dot solutions dot face mesh so this is nothing but initializing face mesh as face mesh then again face mesh face mesh I don't know why they call it, but once you have it, then you initialize the function or the variable that will be calling this function from media pipe. And we call that face mesh. Face mesh is equal to MP face mesh dot face mesh. How many face meshes are there? <laughs> but okay, it is what it is. Though that's media pipe. Don't blame me. Now this is uploaded. So this is another variable to upload all the files from your computer directly into Colab. So uploaded is equal to files dot upload. So there is a function called upload into files, and we again put them into uploaded. So see the irony there. But the, now the next step, once you have initialized all your steps, then you're starting the upload process. We'll upload all the images and each image will go through media pipe go through the landmark and then we will draw the landmarks on your face that's all we're going to do so the what was the first step we will first start uploading the files we will say for file name that is going to be uploaded in uploaded this uploaded is nothing but a dictionary which will hold the file name of all your files that you're uploading and you can upload multiple files so multiple images can be processed simultaneously. So the uploaded function is having the names and we will go through each file name. And once we have the file name, we will pass it to OpenCV so it can read the image for us. So we say image, please OpenCV come here and read the image for us using the imread function. And we need to pass the file name. The file name is file name that we have in previous step and it reads it for us. Now this image, once OpenCV reads it, OpenCV always reads in the BGR format, blue, blue, green, red. And all the other applications, other computer vision libraries, 
they work in the RGB format. The red comes first, green, and then blue. So it's opposite. So we need to change that into an RGB format before we go into media pack. So we do CV2 underscore dot convert color image CV2 color BGR to RGB. So this is the function that can do the conversion for us. But before we, we and we can initialize the same thing into another color. But let's say this is our image. And we will call now call once we have the BGR image ready for us, we will now call media pipe to use this image and then convert or do our face mesh detection. We'll call result is equal to result face mesh that we initialized here. Face mesh dot process our image. But before we process it, we want to convert it, right? So we will copy this function and we will paste it here. So instead of this image, we will call convert color image. So what is happening is we are sending the image that we have. And let me delete this. So we are calling the face mesh function to process on our image. And what is our image? This image, right? But instead of giving the image directly because it's in the BGR format for OpenCV, we are converting it into an RGB image. And then you're supplying it to face mesh, then face mesh will detect all the landmarks and then save it under result. This result is nothing but a big file, big landmark, big array that holds all your landmarks on your face. And we will go through all of these landmarks and draw them on your face so you know where they are. But next is, let's take the information about the height, width, and the number of channels in your image, which is image.shape. The image.shape has the information about the height of the image, the width of the image, and the number of channels that are there in the image. Channels we are not so important, not so worried about, but the height and width we need because in the next step, when we draw all these landmarks, the image, the open city need to know where are these landmarks respective to the height and width of the location. So for that, we will need the height and width. And now let's go through all the landmarks in that result variable. So we call for face landmarks in result dot multi face landmarks. That's a mouthful. What we are doing is we are looping through each face landmark in face landmarks. I believe there are about uh, 468 face landmarks in here because it could be you you could have multiple faces in the image. So it will go through each face and pull up all the landmarks and save it under face landmarks. Now we'll go through each landmark for i in range zero to 468. There are 468 landmarks that MediaPipe is detecting for us. We will go through each of them and then draw the location of those landmarks. Now, coming back here, we say point is equal to, because we want to find out the location, which is given by a point, which is the X and Y coordinate on the 2D plane. And we say face landmarks I, so the ith landmark, and x is equal to end point x. Now, respective to the height and width, we say width. So this is just giving the location of that x or that landmark, the x and y coordinate, with respect to the width. And similarly, y is equal to end point y multiplied by h. So this is just giving out the x and y coordinate of that face landmark because when face mesh is detecting the points, it detects with respect to your face. But when we have to draw on your image, OpenCV needs to know where is it in that whole big canvas of the image that you supplied. So in that, for that perspective, you want to multiply that with respect to width and height. So it knows exactly where it is with respect to the whole image. Because OpenCV has information about your whole image, 
Right now, it does not have information about just your face. But once we have the X and Y coordinate available to us, then we will call OpenCV's draw circle function to draw it out for us. And we say CV2 circle, and this circle takes the image that we need to draw on, and it will take the X and Y coordinate of the center of the circle that way we want to point. So X comma Y. So the next thing is zero, zero, 255. This is just the color of the point. And here we're giving it as a BGR format. So the blue is zero, G is zero, and R, which is 255, is nothing but red color. So you're giving, we're going to draw red color points, and the thickness of the point would be, or uh, you're telling the point should be fully colored. There's no no thickness. So this the, it's a solid dot that it's going to draw on for us. And the radius of that dot is number two. Once we have this, we just display that image. CV2, I am show, and the image that we just drew. This should take care of everything. And if we did not do any mistakes, it should run properly. But immediately we do see uh, issue here. I think this was a function instead of this. Let's try this again. You don't like what I did. MP is not defined. Why is MP not defined? Because we have to import import media pipe as MP. And let's try this right again. Okay, so it's asking for us to upload the files now. And we have these two images that we're going to try, person one and person two. We just upload it. It's going to take a few seconds and it gave us the error. And the error is normalized right in the face landmarks section. And the point face landmarks, multi landmarks. Face landmarks dot landmark. Dot landmark will give us the landmark of the location. We'll try this again. Choose files, open these two images, come back, open it up. And you have these faces that are giving us the points of the locations of those landmarks. So this is, you can see it's concentrated on the eyes, it's concentrating on the nose, it's concentrating on the lips as well. A little bit more clear in this image, but you can see there's a lot of landmarks giving information about the essential features of your face, like your eyes, your nose, your lips, and the location of your ears. So this is basically giving us the more, more detailed information about your face. Now, this is not defined because here you don't know because it's, it's just a landmark, which is among those 468 landmarks. It just has information somewhere about your eye, about your nose. But let's say I was only interested in looking for the eyes only interested in the lips of the person. And for that purpose, there are some other more detailed algorithms or which can go through each landmark and pull us the information for us. And for that, let's run these codes. This is a function, this is a code that can only, re that can resize the image into a more smaller image. Uh, it's something which is optional, but again, you have access to it if you need it. The next thing is the face image. So this will give more in-depth information about where the eyes, nose, and lips are. Coming back, we'll take these two images again, and we will let it process. And once we have this, now you can see it is giving us information about the right eye, the left eye, the lips of the person. Similar to the case in this case. And here you have more information about where these essential features are. And then based on that, you could use it. Let's say a person is blinking. And you want to blink and you want to check whether the person blinked his right eye or left eye and based on those you could take out the information from the landmark now this is another code which is used for video processing let's say you want to do the same application on a video you run this and you run this second code which is going to allow you to upload the video that you want to do face mesh detection and i have some videos here and we will just run this image here and it'll take a few minutes, it'll upload the file, it'll run through each frame of that video, and then return the final video and write down that, it'll write the, all the images 
in a video file and then send it out back to you to download. I hope you found this helpful. With that, take care, stay safe, bye-bye.